Hello and welcome to Gallery Works. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch and we're in the studio today with fellow artist and very good dear friend Alan Pape. Um, Alan has a really interesting history and he's going to share that with us today and his artwork. So I'm glad you could join us. Welcome to the show, Alan. I'm good to so see glad. you again. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see you too. Yeah, I, I wanted to start off with uh, a story about uh, Kitty and I. Uh, this is a, a plein air painting I did in Ireland when she brought her students uh, on a uh, seven day uh, trip to Ireland. In fact, you were there twice. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the Grand Canal. And your class was uh, starting from the, uh, the bridge on down the side of the canal and I decided to set up down here and, and paint to the east and you were up there painting to the west because there were <laughs> other buildings and, yeah, and I... uh, boats there. And uh, suddenly uh, we heard, I heard this ruckus and a, a bit of screaming. <laughs> and I looked up there and there was one of her students was in the middle of the canal. <laughs> she had fallen right in. <laughs> yeah, she rolled down the, uh, the embankment there and, and flipped right into the canal. And of course, no, no, none of us knew how, how deep it was. I know. Oh. And I didn't know if I was going to have to dive in to get her. Oh. Uh, but she was able to work her way over to the area. And we pulled her, pulled her out. And uh, that was uh, part of a... Uh, an interesting day, to say the least. Her, oh. her painting was over, and the class took a while to get settled down. <laughs> <laughs> that was that's oh. the joys of plein air painting. Oh yes, yes, it definitely is. Yeah, that was. I, I and I remember um, that uh, particular day because I had walked down and was standing by you and because you were quite a ways away from me and I had walked down and I had looked at your painting and the, fir uh, the, the, the first impression I had was of surprise and I, maybe I shouldn't tell you this, but I was surprised how well you were doing. It was just beautiful what you were doing, and I loved it. And you were right on target, you know. And then we had all that other exciting stuff go on. So yeah, that was. Those were those were two very wonderful trips. They yeah. really were. And if it hadn't been for your expertise, we wouldn't have known how to get around Ireland and, and all the places and everything because you'd been such a frequent visitor there. So it worked out really well. Well, it, it was a, a great uh, time. It, it was probably the best group we ever had oh, yeah. on this program. We're getting a little ahead of the, the story, but okay. uh, this is a painting that I did uh, uh, after I had taken one of uh, a year of Kitty's classes, and it's basically an architectural uh, view of uh, the place where I was working in Milwaukee at the time. And uh, it's called the County Clare. It's a, uh, a reconstruction, basically, of a, a, a Dublin uh, boutique hotel mm -hmm. in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So it has an Irish theme through and through. And part of my job while I was working there for six years was to promote all the Irish hotels that these investors owned. And uh, I ran the tours to Ireland mm -hmm. to get to one of the uh, places. We'll, I'll show you a picture of that where you, you stayed. Uh, but before uh, we get into the story too long, I just wanted to mention how important uh, Kitty's classes were to me getting started in painting. I, I knew I wanted to paint for a long, long time. And I was an art student uh, in Milwaukee at UWM back mm -hmm. in the 60s. And I wanted to do representational painting. And, but at the time, everything was modern, modern, modern. Abstract. And I didn't get any uh, encouragement uh, to do this sort of thing. I loved uh, museums and museum dioramas. And I thought maybe someday I'd be a museum person and creating uh, these interesting art exhibits mm -hmm. in, in museums. But I had no encouragement from the professors, so I switched my major to go into landscape architecture because I knew I had interest in art, but I also liked plants. 
uh, and trees and shrubs. And I, so I got my degree in Madison at, at, in the landscape architectural department. And uh, I specialized in a, a small area called historic preservation. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I've restored a lot of buildings, written a lot of reports, got into uh, creating museums, moving buildings, and uh, it, it worked out pretty good. And uh, I retired from all of this six years ago, and I've been doing a lot of painting since then. So uh, this was a, a painting I did just to show the County Clare where I worked uh, in my, uh, uh, in my, the end of my career. One day we had a staff meeting and the staff announced uh, we're planning to uh, beautify the front desk area in the hotel. And I said, oh, I'd like to volunteer and make a painting for the back wall in the front desk. Uh, never having done a big painting, but uh, having uh, weekly classes with you, I thought right. you would be able to help. So I came in to your class and with this challenge. How do I put it together? How do I paint people? <laughs> And how do I paint a dog and, and buildings and, and a thatched roof? And so this was a, a class project that you helped me with. Mm -hmm. uh, and as soon as it was finished, we hung it. Uh, I had it framed and hung in the back uh, wall behind the front desk at our hotel. And the, uh, uh, the owner of the corporation came in. Uh, the very next day, and he, he called me at home. He was so excited. He says, I want 20 more. <laughs> I remember that. 20 more. <laughs> well, uh, as it turned out, uh, the goal was to produce 100 Irish paintings before I retired. Oh. And I, I did. Uh, 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 I was successful in that. But what it was really interesting to me is that most artists are always looking for places to display their work, mm -hmm. where I had a built-in audience here with the five hotels for putting paintings in all the rooms, which was really 125 rooms. Right. Uh, and in the lobbies and behind the bar, right. the front desk. So uh, I never was successful in, in putting all the rooms uh, uh, with original artwork because the people started buying them off the walls. Oh, marvelous. <laughs> and uh, maybe someday I'll go back to it again. And, and, uh, it, but it was interesting uh, to be known as the artisan resident. Mm -hmm. uh, I hardly even knew what an artisan resident was uh, at the hotels. So I would spend time in some of the hotels uh, painting so right out there uh, where the people were coming and going. Right, right. And then I did have a show, my first show. I, I have a picture of that, too. Okay. And all this time you're learning. With every, with every painting that you did, you were, you were reinforcing yourself and you were learning. And it was wonderful to have a patron that paid for all the, all the painting supplies exactly. and, and let me paint uh, on his time. So yes, I, exactly. I got paid to paint. And, and with your help, I was able to uh, go from step to step in the I, I, I have to tell you, um, Ellen, I, I was amazed at, I mean, that was, the, I mean, talk about a gift. That was really, you lucked out. I mean, you were just the right person in the right spot at the right time because that doesn't happen, you know, that happens so rarely in this, in this artist world and the artist's life that you fall into a gig like that. I mean, yeah. that you, you were very fortunate. This painting uh, is the entrance uh, for uh, Castle Daly Manor, uh, the hotel that we owned over there in, in Ireland. And you're seeing uh, the front of the building. It's a Georgian style manor house that was owned by a wealthy Irish person built mm -hmm. in in uh, 1760, and there's a bus coming in uh, loaded with Americans, and some of our staff and our dog is out there uh, to receive them. Boy, do I remember that. Oh, yeah. when the first time I pulled up there, my heart was thumping so hard. I just was so <laughs> excited. 
yeah, the, your students uh, very much enjoyed. Uh, what room were you in uh, that time? Um, I can't remember the, the, the number of the room. All I remember, it was quite elegant, okay. and I was very happy with it. Okay. During the, uh, the time that uh, the uh, tours, uh, the visitors were there on the tour, we would stop at Colleen's pub. And this is a picture of, uh, of the Americans walking across the street to Colleen's. And uh, we'd go there, uh, I think on Sunday afternoon, before we went to Clon McNoise on the Shannon River. Mm -hmm. And Colleen's is one of those pubs uh, where there's a grocery store combined with a pub. Right, right. And uh, they're known for their Irish coffee with a, the whiskey and the fresh cream on the yeah, top. Yeah, right. And it's just a wonderful environment. And we would have sing, uh, do, do singing in there and uh, get into the spirit of what pubs are like. <laughs> So it's inter uh, interesting, the, uh, that painting was sold uh, the, the first day of my first show. And a, a man came in to uh, the hotel where I was showing these pictures. And he started out by, by buying that one. Uh -huh. uh, that was... Uh, I think it was $850, and by the time he left, he bought two more oh my. off the wall. And this woman here, uh, uh, Nancy Jensen from Plymouth, came down to Milwaukee, and she purchased this painting uh, that's right above us, and she has that in her home. So my first really? show, I was able to sell four large paintings. That's marvelous. And That's marvelous. I was so surprised because when Nancy said, I'd like to buy that one, <laughs> it was almost as said, you, you really want to buy it? You know, I had, had ever sold a painting before. <laughs> you want to buy this big painting? It's $850. No, I want, I want that painting. Ellen, I have to tell you, at that time of your life, you walked around with this look on your face of absolute, total awestruck. <laughs> it was like you couldn't believe what was happening. It was all, all happening so fast for you. And I, I was so happy and proud of you. I really was. I was happy for you and, and very proud of you. Yeah, your encouragement helped a lot. Just to have the basics, mm -hmm. how to start, and, and you have that stage fright where do you start? Right. You have an idea what you want to create, but if you don't have those basics, mm -hmm. you're fumbling around and how do you lay out your palette and what colors are cool colors and which ones are warm colors? Right. And there's, there's, the, yeah, you have to know the basics, the, the technical part of it, and then, and then once you have that down, then you're free to create. You know, it, you know, I, I really appreciate it the way you took me. You just started me out with pencil drawings, mm -hmm. just like Mm -hmm. Somebody coming in for the first time. Yep, yep. And I remember our very, the very first time you took a workshop from me, and you said, I have made up my mind. You have helped me make up my mind what I want to be uh, when I retire. I want to be a full-time artist. And I, th I thought to myself at the time, you know, that's wonderful, and I hope that's really true, you know. Little did I know how you were going to be able to put that all together and really make that a reality. Most people have a little trouble there following through, you know, but you didn't. You made it your reality, and that was, that was very, very, made me feel very, very good because when, you know, when you told me after the first time you met me and took one workshop and said, I know what I want to do now, I, I just makes me feel wonderful how things have turned out for you. Yeah. Uh, this next painting is uh, the kind of work that uh, I thought, well, how do I specialize in, in my painting style? And the more I talked with these uh, two old Irish guys, the more oh. I realized that when you paint a painting, 
you're capturing a story and perhaps I could write up the story behind the painting. So this was the first painting I did where I actually uh, interviewed them and mm -hmm. um, my friend Stuart came along on the tour and he's working there with, with Queenie, their, uh, their um, what are the dog? Uh, the um, border Collies. Border Collies. And uh, Tommy over here had just taught us uh, how to make these St. Bridges crosses <laughs> inside their, uh, their kitchen. And that whole environment of being in, in a, a real honest-to-goodness hospitality, it, it's almost like spending three hours in heaven. Oh, yes, guys. definitely, definitely. And you got a chance to come back and, and paint there, too. Yes, I did. Uh, Bonita Budish and I, uh, we co-led uh, uh, the second uh, group. And uh, Bonita and I had uh, a chance to get away one afternoon. And we went to their cottage, and we, we painted. And, and unbeknownst to us, the gentleman had prepared this lunch for us. And so we got to actually go inside their cottage. And it was a thatched cottage. And, and, you know, and they cooked and they heated and everything over this, this like, fire where they, they burned, um, what's it? Peat. 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 And, uh, and they were just so delightful. And I think one of the, my favorite paintings from that time is the painting I did of the two of them peeking out the window at me as I was painting the outside <laughs> of their cottage with their little window. They had a window and they had some flowers in it and the cottage was all whitewashed white and the two of them were peeking out of the lace curtain at me and that's one of my favorite memories of it. I would never sell that painting. <laughs> they, were, they were marvelous gentlemen and Bonita and I just, we looked at each other like, <sighs> and it, it was wonderful. It was, what a day, what a day. Well, as I started to specialize sort of in paintings that have a story behind it, um, and I was retired by that time, my wife and I, my wife Marilyn and I, w decided that we wanted to uh, do what she calls traveling with a purpose or purposeful mm -hmm. traveling. Mm -hmm. And we bought a, uh, a van and equipped it for camping, and we started going around to all the national parks and she would sit uh, on the side and I would paint. And we did that for, uh, well, we're still doing it. Uh, next year we're going on a big trip to uh, Nova Scotia and Maine and we'll be painting oh, wow. there. And uh, three weeks ago I w we were in Italy and, and I uh, painted four paintings and she would sit there and watch me paint and she would read. But this is, uh, this became quite a, a neat way of, of seeing uh, these national parks. Well, because you were because you would do the painting, and uh, and in 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 place of paying, is that is that how you? Uh, how quite you... often, uh, I tried to get to be artist in resident at the Rocky Mountain National Park, mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, and uh, I started to. Uh, you know, I, I didn't make it. So I tried with other national parks and state parks, and they were more open. Right. And uh, Zion National Park actually wanted me to be uh, there for their 100th anniversary and bring 24 paintings of Zion oh my. for a show. Yeah. Well, that was a huge commitment. Yeah. As it turned out, uh, I wasn't able to do that. But here's an example. I was the first artist in resident for the Florida Park System, and, mm. and this is one of the paintings that I did uh, oh, for them. Oh, okay. And this was a uh, oh, that's beautiful. A picture of a, a CCC project that was done uh, back in the 1930s. Right. And uh, they wanted me to paint. Uh, they were one of the many par national and state parks that had the CCC uh, workers uh, work relief back in the in the late 30s mm. and early 40s. That's so beautiful. That was taken fr done from an old photograph. Uh, and then I decided to do an artist in residency for a historical society that had a saloon. Okay. So 
uh, this is a, a picture, a, a, a painting I did of an, an old picture that was in this saloon. And I was there for a week and, and did this painting. And you, you can uh, actually see there's some old chairs. Those are real chairs mm -hmm, standing mm -hmm. in front of the, of the painting. And there's the, uh, the pool table there on the right. And it, it harkened back to my original idea uh, back in the 60s of doing a museum exhibit where you have real artifacts in front mm -hmm. and it sort of drifts back into a painting for a backdrop. Sure. And that was a lot of fun. I guess so, yes. Uh, this, this is one I did in, for a museum in Arizona. I was artist in resident there for a month and I did 13 paintings for them the first year and uh, six paintings the last year. And here is a, a bird's eye view of, of an old ranch in mm -hmm. Arizona, mm -hmm. and which uh, half of the ranch became Fountain Hills, Arizona, a, a, um, a new town development. And the oh. rest of the ranch became Fort McDowell uh, County Park. Oh, but that's beautiful. This that's is a really quite beautiful. a large painting. How, uh, how, when you say quite a large, now what do you mean by that? Well, it's... Uh, it's three feet by four feet. Yeah, that is a good size, right. But it was done from, from old photographs done uh, on the land, and then I imagined what it would look like from a bird's eye view. Sure, you sure. And here is a mural uh, that was done for the Plymouth Historical Society. It's, it's uh, eight foot high and uh, 16 feet long. And it shows mm. the, the city of Plymouth in 1867. Mm -hmm. Now, is, is Plymouth where you're from originally? Yes. Okay. Well, I've lived here for, since 1983. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted to show the overview of the town uh, when it was really in its heyday, when things were booming and uh, the, uh, the railroad was coming through and, and they, they still had a stage line and, uh, a lot of the original uh, businesses were there on the river. So this was another kind of a dream come true, uh, thinking, you know, 40 years ago, could, could I do murals? Mm -hmm. And it was a, lo a lot of fun to produce that. Now, and what was the size of the mural? Do you remember? Yeah, it was uh, 8 feet by 16 feet. Oh, my. Okay. That, yeah, that's right. I remember you stopping by and, and telling me. Um, that you were working on a mural, and I never did get down to see that. I was sorry about that. It's, yeah. it's part of a kind of a streets and old Plymouth uh, group of, of exhibits. Sure. And they talk about the plank road that came through town. Yeah. Now here is uh, a museum, a plein air painting I did uh, two years ago at Old World, Wisconsin. I worked there for uh, 13 years helping to build this large outdoor museum. We moved in buildings from all over the state of Wisconsin. And I got to thinking, in retirement, it would be neat to be artist in resident out there. Oh, sure. Because in, in the old days, there was this itinerant artist type of person that came through these villages, and they would do sign painting and uh, painting on windows mm -hmm. and graining of furniture and graining of woodwork and also uh, uh, paintings for people. They were on the, the go with their uh, horse and buggy. And so I, I got into costume, a period costume, and I was there for five days and I produced four paintings and this was one of them. It's marvelous, so yeah. Th that was really interesting. And then one of my friends from high school, uh, also a fan of Old World Wisconsin, uh, said that he, he and his wife wanted to develop their own little museum and live in it. And I ended up actually selling him a building, this German half timber uh, that I had stockpiled to save. Mm -hmm. And uh, we both went to Lutheran High School in uh, Milwaukee. So I was very interested in German, Lutheran, Pomeranian, mm -hmm. uh, Lutheran, traditions and the architecture that was built in those days by these German Lutherans. 
and I said, hey, Rod, this building would be perfect for you because it reflects your heritage. Mm -hmm. So they, they went to town and, and reconstructed it and also put a log building on the backside and took down three barns and used those parts. And uh, his wife, Susie, is a, uh, uh, makes quilts. So she's pictured out there hanging one of her quilts out. And uh, Rod is out there working with his logs. And I gave them this, this as a present oh. for uh, going through with this vision. Okay. Now, um, we are just about out of time. I don't know where the okay. time has gone. Um, but uh, in the few minutes that we have left, I, I would like you to uh, briefly address this, and then I'd okay. like to briefly address what um, your vision is that you have coming up. And if you wanted to show the last, uh, or the, yeah, that's fine. Here, I'll just take these down. Uh, this is a uh, work in progress. In Colorado, I've had uh, three years of artists in residency on the backside of Rocky Mountain National Park. And this is a painting I did last summer for a family that I interviewed. And uh, basically, I'm fascinated with why bu people build log buildings. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is the story behind why their parents built these log buildings uh, in so, the West. So you have essentially taken taken a painting and and made a story and you're making a story and with diagrams and, and, uh, and, and photographs and, and photographs and everything in it right that is really that's very very interesting so I, I, I want to do a collection of these mm -hmm. uh, and donate them to the historical society I think there. that's a marvelous idea and just quickly now we only have a couple minutes left just quickly <clears throat> what do you have planned for June Okay, uh, I got this idea while I was out in Arizona of, of uh, gathering 10 artists together in a kind of a captured audience for, ten, for four days. And each day we would produce one painting. So totaled up 10 artists doing four paintings each equals 40 paintings. So 40 paintings in 40 days. Mm -hmm. And I... I have decided to go ahead on this, and I've got uh, most of the artists uh, interested in doing it, and uh, we'll see where it goes. But uh, they'll be painted on window shades, of all mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm. And the title is uh, Sh Earth Shades, 40 Paintings in 40 Days. And they'll be rolled up and used in different venues, art centers, churches, and schools. We'll be able to be a traveling exhibit. I think that's a fantastic idea. And I also am very, very honored that you have asked me to be one of the artists. Um, I, I'm very honored to be a part of that. And I, I thank you so much for being on the show today. I don't know where the time went. <laughs> it really flew. Um, I guess it's because you just have, you've done so much. I mean, you're so, you, you, from that first time I saw you till now, you've just grown so, so much as an artist and, and in your experiences, and I appreciate you sharing them with us today so much. Well, thank you. You've so, been my inspiration. Thank you. Thank you. And once again, this is Kitty Lynn Clish for Gallery Works. I'll, don't miss the next show. Um, it'll be another great one. Thank you. Bye-bye for now.